we've looked at standards. Let's go take a look at guidelines and procedures. Because it's all very well to talk about, well, you need to adhere to standards, there are guidelines, but we should actually take a look. Again, you don't need to memorize these, but you need to know that they're there. And when you're actually in the field, you need to refer to these constantly. So we're going to take a look at guidelines, which will guide us. Again, guidelines are not required, but they help us when we do our audit. And they help us adhere to standards. We'll also look at procedures. And just like with the standards that start with an S, guidelines start with a G, and procedures start with a P. And so there are many specific methods that align with the standards for um, risk assessment, digital signatures, intrusion detection, antivirus, firewalls, irregularities. Why don't we go take a look actually at ISACA's site. So here is the guidelines page in ISACA and you can see it starts with a G and you can see that some of these guidelines were withdrawn recently and have been replaced by some others. Now I have to warn you that if you want to see some of this stuff, you actually have to join ISACA. And um, you can join them and there's like a local chapter in your area. The dues aren't too bad, they're like, depending upon where you are, like uh, in LA, they're like, like 25 bucks um, for uh, like twice a year. So it's not bad at all. But some of the stuff you have to actually join if you're going to join professional membership. There's also the reduced cost student membership as well. So we're just going to take a look at some of these so that you can see these guidelines. Like for example, audit evidence requirement. Let's just click this one here, G2. And when I go down here, the first thing they do is they talk about, and, and you can download the PDF if you want. We're just going to scroll the website. They show actually how it links to the standards, like standard S6 or S9. So in linking to standard S6, this guideline uh, performance of audit work during the course of the audit, the auditor should obtain sub sufficient, reliable, and relevant evidence. So they show how the guideline relates directly to the standard, and they show all the other standards that this relates to. They also talk about its linkage to something called COBIT, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Talk about why we need the guideline, and as you're planning, how this guideline helps you. So remember how we talked about how so much of auditing is first really planning. Here's the thing, you want to plan so that you know exactly what to go in and do. You realize your audit will disrupt the business that you're auditing. So you want to go in and be at their convenience as much as possible. I mean, if they're trying to hide stuff from you, you have to detect that, but, but you're, you're trying to not disrupt them if you can help it. And that's why planning is so crucial so that you just know exactly what to go and do and we're out of their hair. And, uh, but we can gather the evidence we need and we can have an informed opinion. So for the planning, the types of audit evidence. And so we should take into account the type of evidence that's gathered. Um, and so also is the, um, uh, is the evidence, um, uh, the things to be considered, is the independence and qualifications of the provider. So like the person who's giving us evidence, are they feeding us something only they want us to see? You know, they, they don't want us to see the real thing or are they independent? So how good is the source of the evidence and how reliable is the source of the evidence? And we should consider testing whether controls have been completed and attested by an independent third party. You go there with professional skepticism. You don't just automatically believe. And the more that you can get it from an independent third party that, yeah, this is how it's done or this is the real, you know, the real data, the, the, that's better. And so now, looking for types of audit evidence. Let's look at 214. Observed processes and existence of physical items. You say it exists. Does it really show me? Can I see where it is? Documentary audit evidence and representations and analysis. So then I can look here and I can see that physical items could be inventory of media or a computer room security system. Notice that these things are very, very broad. Like I said, it's because we're covering any possible industry, any possible business. So you have to fill in the blanks, but use these always as your checklist. And then, okay, for documentary audit evidence, can I see your transactions? Can I see your invoices? Can I see your logs? Can I actually see documentation of activity? And then also, representations of those being audited, okay, you say, 
that you have a system in place. May I see your policy? May I see your written procedure? Um, you say you do it this way, may I see the procedure that you have and see how it's really happening? Let me, let me tell you a story. Uh, so I was at this one center and um, basically I noticed that upper management simply sent an email around saying, you need to be in compliance, so go to this website and uh, take this little training. And that will put you in compliance for the level of education. And so I turned to the receptionist and I said, hey, uh, Nini, do you know about that email? And she said, what email? So we have to actually see, okay, I could go to upper management and they could say, we've got training in place. And everyone takes the training. But when you really get down to it, it's like, <laughs> did you see about that email that said go to that site and get the training? So you have to actually see. It's one thing for management to say they got something. It's a whole other thing to see what's really going on. And I'm not saying that management will necessarily try to hide stuff from you. They, they won't, but they think things are okay. You got to go down, right down to the bottom there and verify. You have to verify for yourself and document that, hey, yeah, everybody did get the email. Everybody did go. Everybody did take that little training. Everybody did digitally sign something. Now also when they talk about availability of evidence, they say realize if you want to see transactions and, and logs and invoices, that stuff may not always be available just snapping your fingers. They may have to drag it out of storage. Uh, it may only be available at certain times because they're using it something. So you have to be sensitive to that and work with them and work ahead of time with them so they can make that stuff available to you. And then when you look at it, they talk about selection of evidence, the nature of evidence. So when you gather your evidence here, the following procedures should be considered. You inquire, ask about it. You actually observe and inspect. You confirm, yeah, they really do it, or yeah, that really does exist. Yes, there really were cameras and locks. Yes, the log says that so-and-so did actually sign in at this time. And can you do it again? Can it be performed again? And also what monitoring there is. So when you look at the guidelines, they take you through this whole thing. First of all, how does it adhere to the standards? How do you plan with this guideline? What, uh, what in addition about like maybe the availability if it's like for evidence? How do you use this guideline when you're actually doing your audit? And how do you use it when you're reporting, et cetera? So these guidelines are really great to help you understand how to actually execute the standards. In addition to the guidelines, we also have the procedures. Now you have to dig down a little bit farther, but for procedures, we can see that they start with a P number. And so we can see that there are different procedures, so like for example, now these of course, they get down much more to the nitty gritty of the tools and the techniques and the technology. So we could say, okay, well, what is the procedure for assessing risk? And we can go to that very first P1 there. And again, it links to the standards and the guidelines, talks about why we need the procedure, and then it talks about, okay, what is risk? What is this procedure all about? And how do we measure? And what's our methodology? And what's our whole audit approach for this particular procedure? I highly encourage you to go to ISACA's site and look at these. Again, you don't need to memorize them, but you should need to know that they're in place. And what I do is that I have them sort of as a checklist. Have I followed the standard? Have I followed the guideline? Have I followed the procedure? Remember, the standard is mandatory. The guideline helps you achieve your standard. The procedure is down to the actual much more nitty-gritty of what you actually do. Um, and what, what are the techniques or the technologies? And so I can see here that risk-based um, is the uh, risk-based IS audit approach. Gives me some information about that. And then it gives me actual techniques and measurement methods here and how to collect the data and how I can actually have auditable units, uh, so to speak. And it, then it gives me examples and measurements. So I recommend that you go and take a look at these. As we look back on our list here, we can see that there are procedures for risk assessment itself, procedures for digital signatures and intrusion detection, for antivirus and firewalls, and for um, self-assessment. There are procedures for 
auditing uh, irregularities and illegal acts, and also for penetration testing itself and vulnerability analysis. And they're not going to say use this particular tool or that particular tool, but they'll say what that tool should do in general and what your output should be. And also, we'll talk about it. They talk about encryption procedures for encryption or electronic funds transfer or um, change control. So know that these we have the standards, the guidelines, and the procedures that are all in place. Now, there is a comprehensive model framework called ITAF. It's the Information Technology Assurance Framework. It is an all-inclusive sort of assurance model that um, the uh, ISACA has basically put together, as well as the IT Governance Institute. And they talk about um, IT assurance auditing guidelines and assurance standards used by professionals. Let's take a look at ITAF. You can download the IT Assurance Framework, the ITAF summary document, and it's put out by ISACA. As you can see, we scroll down, we take a look, and they talk about why we even need this, why it's so important. And uh, they talk about it's, it's again, information security, um, IT security has got to not just be the focus of the technology people. It is the business focus now because everything we do is online. Uh, everything we do is saved in databases and there's some kind of transaction that is electronic. And so it's a business problem here. And so we need a common framework of assurance that we have done the best practices possible. So we can download this for free. They talk about it and they talk about um, when you're using it in auditing. They talk about how it's organized. And you can see that the assurance framework, there are standards, general performance and reporting. There are guidelines, and then there are tools and techniques. And they go through the whole thing. I recommend you get it. You don't need to memorize it. But in the field, you should use it as your frame of reference, along with those standards, guidelines, and procedures. So this is the framework that has been put out by ISACA and, and uh, ITGI, the IT Governance Institute. So these folks have, like I said, put out that summary that you can get for free. You can get a much more in-depth one if you're willing to pay for that. And the ITAF model basically says, OK, as the auditor, we have these general standards. So they've basically taken all those standards and guidelines we've talked about, put them into one framework, one model. And you'll have not only the standards you adhere to, but also performance standards used to provide auditing and assurance. In other words, is your audit actually producing what we need it to produce? And also reporting standards. So once we actually have done the audit, there are standards for how we actually report our findings. And then, of course, the guidelines. We've taken a look at a little bit of the guidelines. We've looked at all the standards um, provided to assist us. And the tools and techniques, we also took a quick look at um, the procedures. So realize that all this has been rolled into now this ITAF model that you can download the summary to. And you can also examine uh, all the source that it came from when you go to ISACA's site.